I'm John. And I'm Jeremy from The Residence. And you're watching So Freaking Cool. Like that. <laughs> Alright, so we can cool here with guys from The Residence. How you guys doing, man? Good, how are you? That's it. Good, good. How's the tour going so far? It's great. Honestly, it's going really well. For us, our first warp tour is so fantastic. First one, man, it's always had to be uh, a memorable experience. It's <laughs> 17 year old me is very proud right now. <laughs> it's extremely proud. <laughs> same. It's very tiring, but at the same time, it's like the best experience ever. It's got to be tiring. I mean, there's what, 900 people backstage there, 70 bands, I think, all together, and you guys are just a traveling city, so it's got to be like. Every day you guys yep. wake up and it's somewhere different. Ain't like you get to come around and have fun and go around the town, or you know what I mean? It's yeah. tough because like we go to all these beautiful cities that like I've never been personally. It's like oh we're here in the morning, eight hours in, uh, just gone next day. And we have maybe like on our off days we have uh, we have one off day in Massachusetts. So it was fun walking around the city, but it was the first day we actually got to explore and like look around where we were. It was so nice, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's, just, it's weird, like just going in, setting up, and then leaving. We got to see New York City, but all we did was see it from like yeah. the distance. Right, right. Yeah, we drove, driving, we drove you, see, you could see the skyline like really far away. And we're like, there's New York, there's a trade center, and that's the closest we got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of parties backstage or what? I mean, you guys got a diverse lineup this year. I mean, those dudes from CrossFit go fucking <laughs> Well, they're hardcore. They're, they they party harder than I do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's there's barbecues all the nights. Um, in the last New York date, there was a Paps Blue Ribbon barbecue. Okay. And that sort of thing is about the craziest. There's the ambulances showing up. Oh, people yeah. in the Heimlich, and lots of stories being told about that night for you know only being Paps beer. Right, right. I think it's out pretty good. I understand you guys just put a release out, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, our EP called How to Tell Sad Stories just came out in uh, April, actually. That's got to be uh, a, a good push. I mean, you know, having the release come out and enjoying something like this, it's got to be like, wait a second here, you know what I mean? You see all the kids just buying it, signing autographs all day. Yeah, it, it really is. It's nice yeah. actually because we have um we have a little bit of a Twitter following too that has been following us on a, a couple of the dates and they're just like they they bought the release when we um played out online at first, but it's so cool actually meeting them and saying and they're like oh we want like a physical copy like it's so cool that you guys are actually coming to the cities to to hang out with us and it's been a great response so far like. For, this is one of the first, I think, for our band, like big things that we've done, and the response has been it's been wonderful and so far. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we've never been able to reach as many people until now. Before, like you're on Twitter, tweeting people, asking them to check you out. Now you get to meet them face to face, and this week we sold our thousandth copy of the EP, which is more than we could ever sell to stay at home. We did. So, uh, I mean, it's been a pretty big victory for us. Personally, and like our uh, our achievements. That's cool, man. That's real cool. It, it, it's got to be uh, different, you know. I mean, for you guys to be in a band for so long and doing what you're doing, and actually have people sitting there buying your shit, and waiting in line to see you. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I mean, some bands get lucky and they have like the internet following, and they're able to sell stuff without leaving their house, and um, you know, get a huge following that way. Um, we're, you know, doing it face to face to meet people there, but it's just, it's great to be able to have that reward of, you know, seeing them enjoy the music and hearing them like tweeting us the next day saying, hey, I got your CD yesterday. It's like the best CD I've heard. And we're just like, yeah, we're taken back by it all. Now, speaking of the internet out there, it's, what's your take on that? I mean, you know, some of these people out there get millions of millions of hits and I've never even played somewhere, you know what I mean? I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I, I got a friend, uh, it's Little Dicky, and he gets 20 million hits on his YouTube account, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a rapper and it's just different this day, you know what I mean? I mean, before mm -hmm. yeah. that, he, you need to go out and play stuff. Nowadays, you can go ahead and just put something up and blow up overnight, man, you know? 
It's um, it's yeah, it's definitely really <laughs> yeah. hit and miss when it comes, like you said, when those those types of acts come around. But um, I mean, you've, you've seen local bands from our scene that will be just another local band, and then also one night they'll just yeah. blow up on the internet and become huge there, and all of a sudden have like a fan base, and it's all just because like one person started tweeting after another, and you know, Twitter is a big big engine for that, and. You know, it just can accelerate. You know, overnight, someone's career can take off. Which, uh, again, without even playing a show, which is what's crazy about it, and uh, it's really beneficial for those bands. But for a lot of bands that don't have that fortune, they still have tools. They still have some following that they can use, and as long as they use it, it, it helps them out. Did you guys play yet? We played at an acoustic site in Orlando. No, and, not today. Oh, not today. No. Mm-hmm. What do you guys go on? We don't want to get to play today. Oh, we're we were standby. Right. No problem. We're a standby band. So basically, we uh, hang out each day. We get to know in the morning if we get to play like a full band set. Otherwise, we do acoustic stuff at the charity tents or just out and around in the in the fields and start playing for kids. And it's a good time. That's cool, man. You guys get a tent and shit. You guys can sell your merch or no? No, we, yeah. we carry it around. We sell it all by hand. We're so going, if we're anyone's all. ever picked up their, uh, the EP on tour, that means they've met us. Cool. We're, we're going, no, we're all old there. school. Yeah. <laughs> we're old school. Yeah, you story. definitely are, man. You know what I mean? I, mean, <laughs> shit. I can remember when I was maybe 15 or 16, I met Fred Durst. Yeah. And he gave me a fucking cassette tape. You know what I mean? He yeah. just came out. No one knew where they were. It was just, you remember that shit. You know what I yeah. mean? So for you guys to go out there and hang out that, you know? Years from now, when you guys are the biggest band out there, kids are gonna be like, "Do you remember this?" Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we, we get here at like seven. We hit the line, and start talking to people. I have my uh, so I have a fanny pack that looks like a sofa, and I wear that all day and just oh, walk cool. around talking yeah. to people and tell them to look for the fanny pack if they want to meet me again later. Very cool. Now, how'd you guys come up with the tour then, man? If you guys don't get a set time, like how did that work out for you guys? If you don't mind me asking. I mean, yeah. Well, the company that does catering for Warped Tour, they uh, are allowed to take out bands each year to help them out. With. So you're part of the catering then? Too? Yeah. Who's the other kids? There's a band called 3PM from Maryland. Yeah. There's an acoustic dad called Uber Light. Okay. And, and Common Thief is Uber another one. One of them. Uh, was it? Yeah. Man, oh, Man of Words is another one. Yeah. Man of Words? Maybe them. I don't know. Yeah. There was a couple. There was a bunch they were talking about. They were. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're all, we all work together, we do shifts in the lunchroom, and then we get to hang out and talk to people all day, and then we're on standby at a place, so we take cycles playing like Randy Ball stage, whenever it allows. Do you guys ever deal with the dick in this crowd here, like the, the people that are back there? You have to do handling their food, you know what I mean? Yeah, it it's happens. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it's been there. The temptation's been there a couple times. It's been there. I haven't. I haven't. I ever He hasn't want to admit it. No. <laughs> no. Uh, it's you know. I mean, I don't know. It's got to be different, especially for you guys being the catering man. You know. I mean, so, I mean, Eagles coming around, and some of these people might be like, "The fuck is that?" It's, Unfortunately, it's you know we look, that's kind of what we were thinking, but honestly, the the response and the people around here have been so nice. Like, yeah, like it seems like everyone on Warped Tour is just happy to be here. Yeah, and you don't really get anyone in a bad mood except for like uh, this month we had twelve straight days of shows in a row. Mm-hmm. So on day twelve, everyone was like checked out and was ready for that day off. But I mean, there's no complaints at all. Everyone's really nice. They're really helpful call you by name, which is cool, because there's, cool. there's bands that you listen to like and go to their shows, and then now they're like calling you by name. So, you know, everyone's super kind and helpful. That's gotta be good. You know what I mean? For people that you're like, you know, like, I used to go buy tickets for you, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? For yeah. them, you're like, hey, you, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's surreal. And it's like an incredible opportunity because you could be at home all summer instead of actually get to get one step closer to be on Warped Tour, hopefully. Cool. Now, 
Now, after this wraps up, what are you guys going to do? Are you guys going to keep on touring? you guys got to uh, record? What are you, what are you we got doing? studio time coming up right after this. We're uh, actually writing and finishing writing and recording our next album. So it's going to be, it's a lot of fun actually. We've, we've actually had a lot of time actually go over some demos. We have our, uh, a couple songs that we play in our live set now that we're going to like finalize, um, do some covers of, and just try and get more concrete. So that's what I'm looking forward to doing in the fall. And then I know we want to do spring touring. Yeah. So we've been, we've been planning around pretty well, much, we've, yeah. We've only toured the West Coast before this. So now we've come out here and like realized how like awesome everyone is and how nice everyone is. We want to stay out here as much as possible. Yeah. All right, cool. People want to follow up, they want to know more about you. What are they going to do? Check us out on Instagram or Twitter. It's uh, the Residence CA for Twitter, uh, Residence Band for Instagram. We love it when you tag us in memes or if you tweet us, send us a message. We read everything you send us, especially when we uh, have like these eight hour drives. All we do is chug Red Bull and check Twitter. So we're always looking forward to talking to people. Cool. All right, man, appreciate your time. I look forward to uh, you guys coming up and doing something more with yourselves. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you guys.